Hi, my name is Jimmy Adcock and I'm here today to talk about the guideline geo range of geophysical solutions and specifically their use in the mining sector. Guideline Geo is a manufacturer of geophysical products. We've been involved in the geophysics and mining industry for almost 100 years. Uh, we've now expanded into many different application areas, including engineering, groundwater prospection and environmental mapping. We're a Swedish company by origin. Our head office, our research and development and our factory are still all in Sweden. But we actually have offices all around the globe covering pretty much every time zone. And on top of that, upwards of 60 resellers, partners and distributors working with us globally. I'm a product manager for Guideline Geo and I'm based in Manchester in the UK. And uh, on the subject of products, we have two product ranges within Guideline Geo. They used to be independent companies, but now we're all under one roof. And that is Marla, which are our ground penetrating radar products, and Abum, which are kind of more traditional geophysics systems. So starting with Abum, uh, the ABEM product range consists of uh, resistivity instruments, time domain electromagnetic systems and seismic systems. And they allow us to map to very great depths um, geology, basically. Uh, we can do searches for minerals, we can map mineral deposits, but we can also do uh, engineering works. So ahead of, let's say, the construction of processing plants at mining sites uh, or haulage roads, checking the ground before we put those in to make sure that they'd be able to withstand heavy traffic. The systems are also well suited to um, monitoring projects where we might want to study the integrity of things like dams or embankments or look at potential pollution plumes. We can also use um, a number of the systems in boreholes as well. So if we have drill holes on site and we want to really see in detail at depth, uh, we can actually put sensors into those boreholes to map the geology in greater detail. Marla is all about ground penetrating radar. So this is a sort of high resolution mapping system for the sort of shallower uh, reaches, so sort of top 20 to 30 meters. Uh, also very useful in the kind of engineering style applications, so perhaps maintenance of the roads and the infrastructure that you have on site during the activity phase and making sure you have a good record of where everything was um, when you come to site reinstatement after mining has ceased. So you can see there are a very wide range of applications that are either directly associated with mining or kind of activities on the, the perimeter of that particular industry. And what I've done is I've, I've tried to split the different activities into pre-mining, sort of the extraction phase and then reinstatement, the post-mining phase, just to have a quick look at those. So pre-mining, it's, it's largely about exploration. Um, we could we would be using our products to uh, map the geology in general, but specifically looking for resources uh, that we could then later mine. And it might be search or it might be then after the search where we've done sort of broadly space survey over a very large area quite rapidly, going back and mapping the hotspots that we found to see in detail the size and distribution of the resources that we have identified. Other things that we might be interested in are perhaps the, the rock strength, the host rock strength. So if we're doing underground mining, then will our tunnels hold themselves up or do we need some kind of reinforcement in there? But also conversely, um, the strength of the rock tells us about the rippability. How easy is it to break up and remove? Because that will inform us on the size of machinery that we would need or the kind of explosives that we'd have to use to be able to remove the overburden to get to the um, resource of interest. We might be looking even at groundwater. We might, especially if we're doing underground mining, we might want to know where the water table is and therefore how much um, work we're going to have to do to keep our mine workings dry uh, during the extraction phase. We can also be doing sort of traditional engineering work. So looking at the, the stability and the strength of the, the near surface uh, geology and soils, because we may need to put in haulage roads, we may need to build processing plants, uh, we might have to store large amounts of spoil material, and we might need things like earth dams for uh, tailings processing. 
During the mining phase, obviously, it's a little bit more limited. The focus is on extraction, but we might be wanting to uh, map where the uh, or predict where we want to go next in terms of expanding the mining. So we might be doing surveys around the edge of the site. Uh, once we've removed overburden, we can repeat surveys to give us better detail of the resource now that we're closer to it. Um, during mining activity, if it's underground, we can use things like GPR to actually look for fractures within the rock and kind of try to predict the strength of the next unit that we'll be uh, working through. Uh, monitoring is very important, looking whether we've got any leaching of, of, uh, sort of pollution, uh, plumes from around the site, also monitoring the integrity of things such as earth dams and embankments and spoil heaps or any slopes, natural slopes that might be above the mining works. You know, are we, by the activity of mining, are we making those slopes weaker? Are we at risk of landslide, for example? Post mining reinstatement, well then it's looking at mapping historical workings that may not have been fully recorded. So knowing exactly where all the tunnels and voids might be. Also looking at the, the strength of the rock that we've left behind, is it strong enough to, to build over? Um, looking at the integrity of the surrounding geology as well. So a very common reuse of mining sites is to use them for refuse landfill uh, or storage of, of highly hazardous waste. And in that case, you want to know about the integrity of that surrounding geology. Will it contain that material or do we need to put some kind of lining in place? Uh, we also then might be interested in, again, continuing that monitoring of any potential pollutants or the integrity of the slopes of spoil heaps and uh, embankments. If we finish with just a quick look at the products and how they fit specifically into those tasks, we start with the ABAM range and our walk temp two. This is an electromagnetic method. So um, it doesn't require kind of physical contact with the ground. We use wire loops laid out for transmitting and receiving. So it's very fast to set up. And in the largest configuration, we can actually map down to a thousand meters. And it allows us to build up a picture of the geology and the deposits within it um, based on the resistivity values. So that's what we're trying to map. And that can allow us to make an interpretation of where the different geological layers are, where the water table is and where there might be, for example, mineral deposits. Very, very fast, takes maybe 20 minutes to lay the equipment out and then between five and 10 minutes to take a sounding. And in that time, we then have information beneath the centre of the layout down hundreds of metres. So we can very quickly build up a coarse picture of the geology over a very wide area. Uh, and then come back and map in more detail uh, once we've identified hotspots. Mapping in more detail can be done very easily with our terimeter. This is our resistivity system. You have an array of uh, metal electrodes in the ground. You run electrical currents through it and we look at how the flow of current changes in the ground. And again, that tells us something about the um, geological structure and materials that may be contained within the geology. We can also use this system as well as for the, the geological mapping and, and mineral prospection. Uh, we can use this for more engineering type uh, jobs, looking for the depth to bedrock, looking at the relative strength of different rock units, um, and also for these monitoring projects, very, very well suited for mapping pollution plumes or water seepage in dams and embankments. The TerraLock is our seismic system. Uh, although we can use this very effectively for geological mapping, it's also excellent for the engineering type work where we might want to identify the stability of slopes or the strength of, of the rock units, uh, either to inform us ahead of extraction or for the stability for construction on top of roads and processing plants, for example. And the great thing about seismics is that the results that we get from that can be converted into standard engineering terms and standard engineering values and make it give you an absolute answer in terms of stability and strength. If we move over to the Marla range, the GPR range, well then um, now, as I say, we're talking about something that gives much more detail. So here, 
we have um, our ProX system, which is the most versatile. This allows a very wide range of antennas from very, very high frequency units that can map um, small fractures in rocks such as marble or limestone, so we can determine the quality before we've removed it from the wall of a particular bench. Uh, it will also, slightly larger antennas can allow us to look deeper into the rock and look for fractures in terms of determining strength. We can use bigger antennas again for mapping depth to bedrock or looking at um, layering in the soils or the shallow geology. Again, uh, helps us with, with engineering parameters. And those high frequency antennas can also be used for the maintenance of sites. So we can look at how road structure is, is holding up. Is it starting to subside, are voids uh, appearing? And also the integrity of concrete on working areas or in batching plants, uh, processing plants, for example. The ProX system also has borehole antennas, so we can lower those into drill holes and actually investigate in detail the individual layers that we have beneath us. So as I say, very wide range of antennas on that one. And then we have our Ground Explorer, which is a much uh, sort of more compact system, very easy to use. And again, this is the kind of thing that would be good for um, shallow depth to bedrock studies, looking at um, road structures, uh, and also use in, in tunnel environments where we're looking at the, the fracturing in, in the rock that we are tunneling through. So hopefully that's been useful. And of course, if you have any questions about the, the products or the methods that we've discussed here, uh, you can contact either myself or one of our representatives and we can have a conversation with you. Thank you very much for your time.